Hello everyone, welcome to Jack Scraps. Thank you for joining me today. I am Jackie and we are creating our next card for What A Card Wednesday. And it is using the Papercraft Essentials issue 156 on page 15. We are going to create this card. It looks pretty fun and I think it's going to be fairly easy. So let's get started. If you've purchased the magazine, you also receive this embossing folder and stamp set. It comes with this great background embossing folder. It has these wonderful travel stamps as well. I really like this one of the sign. You could use that in a lot of different projects. So we are going to use the embossing folder first and run this through your machine two times. So you'll go through it once Take another piece of white cardstock and run it through again. Once you've run it through your machine, this is what it will look like. Of course, there will be lines from where the, you know, the embossing folder ended. We will be cutting this down, but first I wanted to show you what it would look like when you just cut your paper in half and run it through the machine. With your second embossed piece, what you're going to do is pull out some circle dies if you have them or if you have a um, circle punches where you have multiple sizes that would be a good idea also and what we're going to do is map out locations on the embossed part and we're going to die cut those out. So I only have this um, circle dies that have the stitching on it that I got from Andy's store at AliExpress. These work really well. I'm extremely happy with these. And what I've done is I've taken them and I'm going to be mapping out where I want to punch the holes or die cut the holes. Like this. And then you'll run that through your die cutting machine. And what you'll have when you're done are your die cuts of those particular areas. Okay? So your other your second piece will look like this when you're done, and we're not going to need this after that. We just needed the cutout die cuts. Now that our pieces are all cut out, we're going to color the background and I'm going to use this free stamp that I got. I'm oh, sorry, I've already been testing them out. <laughs> um, I got with one of the magazines. I really don't even know what color it is. It just says Adeline, let's see, Aladine, Aladine, Dye Eye Zinc. Um, that's all I really know about it. I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Ink Antique Linen. I'm using Memento Dew Drop Summer Sky and New Sprout. And the Lime Pie, and this is one of the chalk inks. So that's what I'm going to start with. I did test it out. I think they all kind of go together. We will see what happens with that. So we're going to start with our larger background piece first and we're going to use this color. If you have an amber that would be a good color for the background as well. Okay so let's get started on the background. I'm going to start a little bit off of the main area. I'm sure you all know how to do this. One of the nice things about leaving the whole page as is that when I can I can cut it down and then get rid of the darker spots. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and do this offline so you don't have to watch all of that. And I'll come back when I get that done. Okay, now that we have that all 
colored over, we are going to cut it down. So in the end, that comes out to about four and three fourths by six and three fourths. For the smaller circle, I'm going to use the antique linen, and I think I'm just gonna use one of these finger daubers. See how that works out. All I do know is I'm getting ink all over me. So as I'm doing it, I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually kind of turning the die as I go along. So that's how that one turns out. Okay, I think I will go ahead and color the rest of these. Um, whoops, sorry about that. I am going to use the green on the larger circle. The one with the clouds, I'll be using the summer nope I'm going to be using the this actually comes out yellow believe it or not and then for the balloon I'm going to use the summer sky okay so here are all of our pieces colored and what I thought might be neat which I already think it's cool that we're pulling out particular images within the background what I thought would be neat also is to use embossing powder, clear, and pull out this a little bit more than what it's already being pulled out. So I'm going to emboss the four circles and I'll be back. Okay, so I have embossed all of the little dies, circle dies that we created. And to tell you the truth, I didn't like the light color of everything. I'm, I like the darker better. So I actually went over this again with all these stamps and the way I went over it was that I just took the stamp pad and actually went over each of the pieces rather than trying to use an applicator. I even did the same thing with the background and I know you may think it doesn't look good but I kind of like it. Whoops. Because I like the variant colors that it provides and it really makes some of the pieces stand out and I think once we get everything on there it's going to look kind of cool. So the next thing that we're going to do before we add these to the card stock here is we are going to do our stamping. So you're going to want to get out your stamp set that came with the magazine. We're going to use the sign we're going to use the word explore and discover and we're going to use the little bicycle and airplane and the you're going places word sentiment. Now you can use the camera stamp but I found these two little camera pieces in my stash and I think I would rather use them on it. I think that would be kind of cool. This, they both have a little shimmer to it. So I think I'm going to see if this will work before I actually do the camera that comes with this stamp set. So go ahead and get all those supplies out for the next step. Okay, using our stamping platform, we're going to put the base on there. I have my bicycle already lined up where I want it. So I'm just going to ink that up with some black archival ink. And we're going to go ahead and press down. And there's that. That looks good. The next thing we're going to do is put this aside and we're going to get some white cardstock to do our other stamping. So I I found this, you know, spare piece of white cardstock in my stash. And I think we'll start 
with the sign. Doesn't really matter where you put it on the paper because we're going to be fussy cutting everything out. to be a little darker down here. I could tell that when I was stamping it. I think that'll work. Now the next thing we're going to do are the words that go inside of the sign. And we'll have explore on the bottom. Now when you align this, make sure you have it so you can read it. Otherwise it'll be backward. And we'll put discover here on the top. I think that should work. Okay, and we'll press down. And we'll ink those up. Got a little ink over here. Perfect. There we go for that. For the longer sentiment, I think we'll put that up here at the top. And then we have the airplane that we're going to use, and we could probably do that right over here. I'm gonna get rid of these spots just to be safe. <laughs> that was just a fuzzy on the paper and I think those will work. Now we're going to fussy cut them all out. With our pieces all cut out we're now going to color them just like we did the other pieces in um, for this card set and um, I was just gonna say you probably could use color cardstock and you know stamp them as just as easy as we are using ink but that for this particular card that's how they did it and I thought we would just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and color these. I'm going to use some of the same colors that I used in the others. I'm going to use this antique linen for the sign there as well as some brown. I have a coffee here or maybe something lighter. I haven't figured out what I'm going to use for the airplane yet. Maybe a light blue and then um, probably the same for the sentiment there. Okay, now we have all of our components ready and we can start layering the pieces. On this particular piece, it was kind of overlapping the bike, so I did cut off the outer edge, but I did leave the edge rugged so that it would still mirror that of the stitching. That is about the only thing that I did differently. Okay, we have all our pieces done and I'm using some foam adhesive as well as some sticky thon point dot and um, I mean point <laughs> I'm using some sticky thumb sticky dots at point five. I thought it would be nice to have a varying of heights among all of the pieces. So let's start by adding our balloon. Mm 
Let's do the clouds and the sun here. Make sure you line everything up when you're putting it down. Okay, there's the little house. This is the house and the train here. And the sign. And this is going to overlap this piece a little bit. And let's see, we have our little airplane and our sentiment. Let's add the sentiment. We're gonna line this up against the base card here. So it may overlap this just a little bit. And we'll put our plane on top of that. Very cute. So that's all the pieces. And then we can consider adding a camera piece here. They actually put like a big flower here on theirs, but I'm not going to do that. I don't really care for that. Um, I even think some, you know, the, that the camera doesn't really go here. <laughs> so I think for now I'm going to leave the camera off. Okay, next what we're going to do is cut our base for the card and um, consider a layering piece underneath this as well. But this is what the top came out. I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, to finish off our card, I have cut a green cardstock instead of a red one that they call for. And this is at four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And I'm going to glue this on top of it. And then for our card base, this is 10 inches across and 7 and 1 16th of an inch for me. But please make sure you measure all of your card to see how it comes out. You would use the measurements of your colored cardstock. So it will be like this in the end. Very cute. I'm going to glue all this down. I've already put some score tape on the back of each of these pieces to make it easier. And then we'll go on to the next step. To create our envelope, we're going to take a eight and a half by 11 cardstock and turn it with the long edge at the top. And we're going to score at two. 
and seven and a fourth. Now we're going to take the card and turn it and score at five eighths. Flip it all the way around again and score at five eighths. Next what we're going to do is cut out, this is the two inch line, score line. We're going to cut out this little square here and here and at the bottom on each side. You can use your cutter or your scissors and when you do it, you want to go in at an angle to miter the edge just slightly and if you want you could take this piece then align it over here and then repeat it so that it matches or you can just freehand it as well Okay, and we'll do the front, the top, I mean. When you're done, it will look like this. So now we're going to fold on all of the score lines and burnish. So the bumpy side would be up top and you will fold toward the bumpy side. Okay. Okay, we're going to add some adhesive to both sides. Make sure you don't go up too far, keeping in mind where it stops. And burnish that. And then we have our envelope. Now, I haven't set it in prior um, sessions, but I did want to mention that if you want to add adhesive here, if you sell your card or you give the card away to someone to use, you can put your score tape here or, you know, your adhesive tape, but just don't take the back side of it off. We would take our one-fourth of an inch score tape here and we would add it to the top. Burnish it on there, but leave the backing on, and then that way whoever wants to use it can take this off when they're ready to mail it, okay? So for our five by seven card, we have created this envelope, and what I'm going to do on the front of it is mirror the sign that we have on our card, but make it just a slightly different, and I'm going to use Miss Sparkle & Co marble paper pad, and it's really a wood design in all different colors, which I absolutely love this. This is a five and a half by seven and a half um, size. And what I've done, I've taken the more brown sheet and I first cut it in half and I cut down a size to be about three and three fourths by two and one eighths and then what I did was I of course had this really long slim piece and then I cut that in half to create a post that is three-fourths inches wide and three and I would say three and five-eighths in length 
So what I did to make it look like a post that you would just, you know, get off the wood pile or whatever is I kind of made some ragged cuts into it. You'll see here, it's not straight cut. And I did the same up here at the top and even made this at an angle. And on the larger piece, I cut into it like little divots. And that just gives it some authenticity and, you know, makes it looks like used wood or old wood. So what we're going to do is place this on the envelope like this. So then we have our old sign on the cover that will mirror this, okay? So let's adhere this first. I did use vintage photo around the edges. It did smear a little bit on the envelope, but luckily we are going to be covering that. And then now our other piece. Okay. I'm just loving this. I think it looks so cute. Love it, love it, love it. Now to actually write your address that you're sending it to or even put the name, you could just put the name right over it or you could add maybe a little bit of a white piece of paper onto it to write the on, you know, the address there. Got a piece here that's three inches by about one and a half. Half, I think it was, yes, one and a half. I've taken the edge again and kind of done a ragged cut. Let's do that again on this side. I kind of like that. Let's see. Wherever I put it, it mirrors. So I think I will use the Distress ink and go over the edges of that, like we did the other one. So that it blends in a bit, very cute. And we will adhere that down as well. And there we have it. I think that looks really cute. I don't think I'm gonna do any more to it than that, but let me get all my junk out of the way here. So here you have it, our wonderful little card about traveling. On the inside, I put a couple footprints, which I thought was kind of cute as well. That is still using the magazine stamp set that came with it and our cute little envelope that we made from scratch. Well, that's it, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for our What a Card Wednesday, and I'll see you next time.